Unit 10, day 4, inverse trig functions from the unit circle. We'll do inverse trig functions not on the unit circle on Monday, but one step at a time. We need to back way up here, not even trig. Let's back up into Algebra 1 land here. Wait a minute, you said inverse trig functions and then you threw up x squared equals 9. If x squared equals 9, then x equals what was that? Reconsider that answer. Plus or minus 3. Right? Because that equation has more than one answer. Now think really carefully and tell me what the square root of 9 is. Now you're worried. It's not plus or minus 3. It's just 3. It is just 3. The reason is your calculator can't, t can't give you two answers. Your calculator can only give you one answer. So when you type in, and this is not really the answer, but it's related to the answer. When you type in square root of 9, your calculator is not allowed to give you two answers. The reason is square root is a function. Functions only have one output, right? The Coke machine, you can't push one button and have 3 and negative 3 pop out. That's not a functioning function. And so when you type in square root of 9, you need to get one answer. And so yes, if we square negative 3, we get 9. That's true. But we only want one answer. Square root is a function. Therefore, only one answer. <laughs> one answers. One answer. Period. Well, it's not that. I mean, if you square negative three, you get positive nine. That's true. Yeah. But long ago, someone decided. Well, look, we only want. We're only allowed to have one answer. Let's make it be the positives. It would have been really weird if they just made it be the negatives. That, that would have felt awkward. But they said, you know what? We only get one answer. Let's pick. Let's, let's restrict our answers as a restricted range. Not a restricted input, but a restricted range of 0 to infinity. We, we only want the positive answer. Maybe for some of you, does that clarify the difference between x squared equals 9 has two answers, but square root of 9 only has one answer? That's why we try to say when you put the square roots on, you also put the plus or minus on. <clears throat> the square root doesn't automatically mean plus or minus. The square root of 9 is just sitting there. The answer is 3. Okay. That's really, really similar <clears throat> to what happens with inverse trig functions. Let's start, <coughs> excuse me, kind of a parallel setup. Let's start with an equation, sine of x equals 1 half. Let's see, where does the sine of x equal 1 half? <coughs> Unit circle experts. Pi over 6. That's a shallow. Sure. Where else does sine of x equal 1 half? Um, yeah. There's another place. Uh, probably the negative one. Right? Sine is the y coordinate, so it's, it's probably also 1 half right there, yeah. which somebody said, 5 oh. pi over 6. But it can't be on the other side. Oh, no, it looks like it's, it's negative. Right. It can't, be in the, it can't be in quadrants 3 or 4. Okay. Um, are there more answers than that, even? Yes, there's not more locations on the unit circle, but there's more ways to get to those spots. All right, if I go backwards, what angle did I just draw out right there? Negative, for sure. How far did that rotate? 7 pi over 6. And if I really want to get creative, I could go backwards to this one. 
How far did I go backwards for that angle? It's like almost all the way around, so 11 pi over 6. And you could keep going. You could spin around, you know, 100 times and then go pi over 6 and have an answer. So really, dot, 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 is there's a whole lot of answers there. So it could be x plus or minus x pi over 6. Plus or minus. Eh, there's a way you could write that. I would say it's pi over 6 plus 2 pi or 5 pi over 6 plus or minus 2 pi. That way you'd catch all of the rotations. We'll worry about that later. So that's a good point. There is a way to write these better. But for now, we just want to recognize that there's a whole lot of answers to that. Now, if we rephrase this problem into inverse sine of one half, <clears throat> that means find an angle whose sine is one half. Well, I've got options here, but I only want one answer because this is an inverse trig function. Only one answer. Well, if you were in charge of picking which of those answers would be the answer, which one do you think you would pick? Pi over six. Pi over six. That's a great call, and that's what uh, the committee long ago decided. Sign. I wasn't. I wasn't on that committee. Yeah. They picked pi over six, though, right? They picked the easiest one, and that's the the key thing to remember is there's one answer. And the committee long ago decided, you know what? Let's try to make this. This is complicated enough. Let's pick the easiest one possible. So the answer is going to be the simplest angle you can come up with that is a solution <coughs> to your question. All right, how about the inverse sine? Now we're going to get a little bit trickier here. The inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2. Draw a picture first. Maybe that'll help us. Inverse sine negative root three over two. So I'm trying to figure out an angle whose y coordinate is negative root three over two. So what what quadrant am I going to be in, or what quadrants will this happen in? Where is sine negative? Three and four. Is it the shallow, the middle, or the steep angle? Kind of thinking backwards here, but root 3 over 2 is a long side. So yeah, this would be the steep angle. So again, there's an infinite number of solutions there. Which, um, which description of which angle do you think would be the easiest? Okay, so one option would be 4 pi over 3. That's not wrong. I mean, the sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2, but that's not what the committee decided for this one. Committee when they made it or committee when we were teaching this? No, committee when I make that up. Long, long ago when they decided which one to use. When they invented math. How about the quickest, easiest way to get there would be this one? Negative pi over 3. And that's the one that they chose. You, you always take the quickest, easiest, shortest route to get your answer, whether it's sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay, so here's our, our summary for inverse sine. Like, I, I can only pick one answer. There's lots of answers. 4 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3. I didn't get rid of the square root. The square root is how long this side is, right? Root 3 over 2 is how long that side is. All right, so inverse sine has a restricted range. 
meaning the only place we're allowed to look for our answer, of well, I think the picture is more helpful than just writing the answer. So if sine is positive, we'll grab it from the first quadrant because that's easy. If sine is negative, well, it could be the third or fourth quadrant, but which one did we say is the easiest one to use? The fourth. So if sine is negative, we're in the fourth quadrant. Now, we have to be careful because if we're in the fourth quadrant, we want to go there the, the quickest way possible. So we have the negatives.
Where's the cosine negative? What quadrants have a negative cosine? Left side. On the left side. That's a great answer. Cosine is left and right, so cosine is negative on the left. So that's two and three, but on the left is is a better answer. So cosine's negative over there. Root two over two. Um, that always happens at the in the middle. So there's two possible answers. Well, there's even more than that if you really want to get crazy. So which one of those answers do you think is the simplest, quadrant two or quadrant three? <coughs> Where are we allowed to look for cosine? In quadrant two. So what angle is that in quadrant two? Three pi over four. All right, sine equals negative. What quadrants have a negative sine? Um, the lower ones. The lower ones. Again, that's the perfect answer. It is quadrant three and four, but sine is the y value, so sine is negative in the lower ones. Root two over two, that happens at the middle angle. <clears throat> so which one of those do you think is the simplest, easiest? Quadrant four. Quadrant four is the one you have to be careful about because there's two ways to get to that answer. Um, it's gonna be you can go the short way or you can go the long way. Always the short way. So what is the short way? Negative pi over four. Okay. Invariably, someone's going to answer that question as seven pi over four. And they're going to argue with me and say, well, that's in the fourth quadrant. I'm going to say, yeah, but you're not allowed to get past. <clears throat> you're only allowed to, to get there the quickest way possible. Or, back to this, your answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Let's talk about tangent. We'll kind of go through the same process. Tangent of x equals 1. That's an equation. That's got lots of answers. Let's see, where's the tangent equal to 1? Well, where's it positive? I guess let's do that first. Where's tangent positive? Uh, it's first. first one. First one for sure. Everybody's positive in the first one. First and third. What's the reference angle or the key angle, or is it shallow, middle, or steep? Or tangent's one. Yeah, I picked an easy one, right? That's to be the ones where they're the same. So I could, in theory, draw like four different names for ang names of that angle. So let's do exactly that. So, Ty, give me one of those angles that have a tangent of 1. You go first, so you get to pick the easiest one if you want it. What's, so, how about this angle? What's that angle? We said that was the middle in the first quadrant. That's pi over 4. Alina, what's another angle that has a tangent of 1? How about this angle? What's that middle angle in the third quadrant? Good. 5 pi over 4. All right, Will. Ty and Alina took the easy ones. How else could we describe those angles? We could go the other way. So what would that angle be? Definitely going to be over 4. Right. Negative 3 pi over 4. Ryan, they left you the hardest one, I guess. What's that angle? 
Negative 7 pi over 4. How many other answers are there to this question? Infinite. Infinite. Because we can spin around 500 times and then go pi over 4 and have an answer. So the equation has an infinite number of answers. But if we write it as an inverse, meaning find an angle whose tangent is 1, well, I bet the committee didn't have to meet long to discuss and figure out which angle do you think they came up with? Pi over 4. All right, how about inverse tangent of negative square root of 3? Let's first say what quadrants have a negative tangent. It's the, yeah, well, the other ones, right? All of, them except, for that one. All of them except for those two. So two and four have a negative tangent. This is where it's going to get a little tricky in a minute. Do you remember what reference angle has a tangent of root three? Right, and where does that happen? You're right, it comes from root 3 over 2 over 1 half. Now, which angle has a sine of root 3 over 2 and a cosine of 1 half? The pi over 3. Um, well, careful, that pi over 3 is not the right answer. It's going to be something over 3. So we could go negative pi over 3 would be one way to get there. 2 pi over 3 would be another way to get there. Do you know which way the committee went on this one? Negative pi over 3. Inverse tangent of x a restricted range of, again, I think about quadrants before I think about intervals. So if it's, if it's positive, we're definitely using the first quadrant. You're always using the first quadrant if you can. If it's positive, it's coming from the first quadrant. And then the trick was tangent is negative in the second and the fourth. But we decided we would use the fourth. So it matches, uh, it matches sine. Well, it almost matches sine. I don't know if we've made the test yet, but that makes a good bonus point, a bonus question. So why is, or I guess first question is, how is that restricted range different than sine's restricted range? Uh, because it's not the... What's different? It's almost the same. It doesn't include those endpoints. Um, Do you know why it doesn't include the endpoints? There's asymptotes there. So very minor, subtle point. Um, we couldn't ask you for the inverse tangent of an infinity. That doesn't really make sense. All right, so here's the, here's the lesson in one picture. There's my quadrants. Some of my answers come from 0 to pi. Some of them come from quadrant 1 and 2. From 0 to pi. Um, of the three we did... Only cosine came from that, inverse cosine. But I think it makes sense that who's cosine's uh, dance partner on these things? Who's cosine usually uh, reciprocal flipped with? Secant. So it maybe makes sense that secant and cosine would share the same 
restrictions. And some of them are in quadrant one and quadrant four. Uh, the big deal here is if you're in quadrant four, you have to go the negative way to get there. You can't go the long way around. You've got to go the backwards way to get there. That was inverse sine, inverse tangent. So there's two trig functions left. Where do you think cosecant goes? Who does cosecant probably go with? Sine. He's paired with sine. They have a lot of things in common. So cosecant goes with sine. Cotangent's a little bit trickier. You know which one cotangent goes with? Just to keep things fair and balanced. Not really. It goes with that one to avoid the asymptotes. If you think about the graph of cotangent, it had asymptotes at 0 and pi. And so if we stick between 0 and pi, we can avoid, um, we can avoid those asymptotes. So, like, if you had to, if you were really good at, like, mental, you know, a, a picture memory, like, that's the lesson right there in one picture. picture. Mental snap, done. Got the whole thing. Cosine, secant, and cotangent are in quadrant one or two. Sine, tangent, and cosecant are in quadrant one and four. I know, it doesn't really work that easy. Um... Let's try some maybe trickier ones here. Inverse cosecant of negative 2. Inverse cosecant of negative 2. Cosecant. Um, I don't like thinking about cosecant. What would I rather think about? Uh, Sine. And if the cosecant is negative 2, what does that mean the sine is? Negative 1 half. So we don't really even work cosecant problems. We change them to secant problems. Let's see. So it's got to come from first or fourth. What quadrant has a negative sign? Fourth. Well, third and fourth, but I can't go into the third. So I know I'm in the third quadrant, or excuse me, the fourth quadrant. So what angle is that? It's got to be the... No, it's the short side. So it's shallow, so it's... But you, it can't be 11 pi over 6 because that's going the long way around. You've got to use negative pi over 6. Um, quadrant 3, different teachers have different names of this. I think Mr. Conley calls it the black hole. I like to call it the quadrant of death. But whatever you want to call it, you can't go into quadrant 3. You can't go through quadrant 3. If you go through quadrant three to get to quadrant four, you died. Okay? It's a little bit dark, but stay out of quadrant three forever and always. On Well, when you're doing inverses. Inverse cotangent of negative square root of three. Cotangent's got to come from 1 and 2 to avoid the asymptotes. But, man, I don't, I don't like cotangent. Let's go to tangent. So what's the, what's the price we pay if we want to change cotangent to tangent? I need to, I need to flip it over. But then I fix it, yep. 
I still think that's better than not fixing it and keeping it as cotangent. So who has a tangent of root 3 over 3? Well, it's not the over 4, because that's 1. So it's either the over 3 or the over 6. It's going to be the over... It's, it's, it's over 6. I'll tell you a shortcut for that in a minute. It's over 6. And I've got to come from the first or second? It's going to be the second. because it's negative. Yeah. So what's over 6 in the second quadrant? Uh, what angle? What angle? 5 pi over 6. Now, this is a little bit tricky because if the problem started with inverse tangent, you'd have to come from quadrant 1 or 4. But the problem didn't start with inverse tangent. It started with inverse cotangent. So you got to go 1 and 2. That's as tricky as that's as tricky as we can get it. 4 pi over 6? 4 pi over 6 would be in that quadrant, but that would be 2 pi over 3. By the way, here's the, the tangent trick. Uh, the tangent of pi over 3 is root 3. The tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. Some of you are going to want to shoot me because I didn't show you this earlier. Um, over 3, that has 1, 3 in it. So your answer has 1, 3 in it. This is just like a fluke to help you remember. This isn't like mathematical at all. Uh, how many threes does it take to make six? It takes two threes to make six. So maybe that helps you remember uh, the tangents. If not, you go the long way around, no big deal. Okay, arc means the same thing. So, or means the same thing as inverse. So let's say arc sine of, well, let's do a sine of zero. That seems odd. Arc sine. If you don't like arc sine, you can immediately change it to inverse sine. So that means find an angle whose sine is zero, and it's got to come from So what angle? Zero or, um, three, no, zero or two pi. Okay, zero or two pi or pi, but only one of those answers is acceptable. Uh, it's going to be there. It's got to be zero. I, yeah. I mean, yes, the sine of pi is zero, but that's but not allowed. Negative, sine of negative pi is zero. Sine of two pi is zero, but none of those are allowed. No. Only between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. I can only have one answer. Let's get really fancy here. The secant of the arctangent of square root of 3. The secant of the arctangent of the square root of 3. So really, it's just two problems at once. Inverse tangent of square root of 3. Inverse tangent's got to come from 1 and 4, just like sine. So what angle has a tangent of root 3? Well, what quadrant is it going to be in, 1 or 4? It's got to be 1, because it's positive. And then which angle has a tangent of root 3? Yeah, use the, the little hint there. Pi over 3. Sort of, sort of on the background of all this, you got to know your unit circle for this. If you don't know your unit circle, none of this is going to make sense at all. Maybe I should have started with that. Maybe you had some warm-ups on that. So you guys very few of you that don't know the unit circle yet, this is going to be just a mess until you sit down and figure out the unit circle. After that, it's not too bad. 
All right, secant of pi over 3. Secant. Oh, I don't want to do secant. Cosine. Cosine pi over 3. What's cosine of pi over 3? That's better. Sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is a steep angle. So it's 1 half. Although, be careful. Don't, don't start celebrating your answer yet. That's not our final answer. Because we were supposed to be finding a secant, which means we need the flip of cosine. So the answer is 2. We should just give you like one problem like that and just base your whole mm -hmm. semester grade on that. We would all get half and Because you got inverses, you got tangents, secants, cosines, flips, all sorts of stuff. Let's do one hard one and one easy one. Then we'll be done. Arc cosecant of negative 2 root 3 over 3. Arc cosecant. What a, what a pain. I don't want to do arc cosecant. Then do what? Arc what? Arc sine. And what's the price I pay for doing arc sine? i got to flip it. But then I gotta fix it because that doesn't look like a, a the right value. So it'd be root root three over three um, Why? Yeah. Before you start multiplying everything, why don't we cancel those? I mean, it's gonna reduce to. It is 6 on the bottom, but it reduces to 2 on the bottom. Because you get 3 root 3 over 6. That's true. And then you can reduce. OK, now we have a better problem to work with. In fact, why don't you finish it from there? Find an angle whose sine is negative root 3 over 2. So there's a few more practice problems. Arc cosine of 1 to 0. Arc sine of 1 half is pi over 6. Have a good weekend.